this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I am driving the Infiniti QX60. And while I know my counterpart, Tim Esterdahl, has already taken a look at this, this is going to be a completely shocking revelation. We don't necessarily agree about our views on this vehicle. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take a look at the five good things and five bad things that I found, and in many cases, I don't agree with Tim. So let's take a closer look at the Infiniti QX60 right now. All right, digging right into the good column. I'm gonna start with the exterior styling. And this is actually something Tim and I do agree on, that we think the exterior styling of the Infiniti QX60 is really well done. From the redesigned grille to the redesigned headlights with these piano key LED lights over the top to this really wicked cool design at the bottom of the lamp. Um, all of the details here are spot on and really, really nice. I love the wheels that you've got right here. I love the, the design. I think that looks really smart and I don't know how I managed to get the infinity symbol in the right location when I parked, but I did. So I'm gonna give myself kudos for that. And the side profile is also very handsome. I like the aggressive stance. It looks very athletic and I love this floating roof line here. And as Tim pointed out in his video, this actually gives it the appearance of a little bit of a Range Rover, um, you know, just because you have that blacked out D pillar there. And I, I don't know, I just think this whole thing works really well. You move around to the back, you have this very slim, elegant tail light. And I love the fact that you can't actually see the exhaust pipes. Now they're there. You can, you can see the exhaust pipe underneath here, but it just makes it look a little bit more elegant to me by the fact that they've hidden it and pointed it down and you can't really see it. So everything about the exterior profile of this vehicle just works for me. And this tops off the good list. Now, even though I didn't put the interior specifically on the good list, I definitely want to point out before I move on to items number two and three, that this definitely falls on the good side of the spectrum. I think Infinity has done a really nice job with the design. I love the no longer has this weird two screen element. You just have the single screen here. I love the horizontal um, design cues that go across. I think everything about this just works and looks really good. So nope, moving into thing number two on the good list in my book, and this is also something Tim and I agree with, the massaging seats. These are really nice if you are on a road trip, if you are just driving around town, um, you can just hit this button right here and power it on and you get um, seats that start moving. I don't know if you can see it, but these right here, it just moves up and down and massages your back. And to me, that is just phenomenally cool. You can go into your menu and your settings, and it will also allow you to um, look at some of the functions here, so including the massaging seats, and it allows you to change the intensity. Oh, who would move that off of a high intense thing? Ah, yeah, I'm totally gonna move the speed up there too. So um, you can change the intensity, you can change the speed, and it gives you a couple of different options in terms of like whether you want refreshing or you want relaxing or you just need your, ooh, lumber. I like that one. I think we're gonna leave it there. But you have this in both the front driver and the passenger seat, and that to me is definitely worth making the good list. So something else that makes a good list while we are sitting here in the driver's seat is going to be this area right here. So in addition to having a wireless charging pad, you also have USB-A and USB charge ports. And while we are kind of in this transitory phase of new devices, old devices, and um, everything in between, these three options will make sure that everybody stays charged. So I'm definitely appreciative of the fact that you have USB-A, USB-C, and wireless charging. And I will point out, you also have wireless Apple CarPlay. 
See, you can see that right there. My phone's connected to CarPlay right now. So all of that stuff, the connectivity, that gets another check in the good column. Now the next thing on the good column is going to be in this area right here, but it's not necessarily this display because by the way, this split screen thing isn't really working for me. Nope, what I really like is when you put it into reverse, you have an incredibly good and clear, clear, let's be very clear about this, <laughs> clear definition to the cameras. And that's not always the case when you get into a vehicle with any kind of a backup camera. While the law regulates that you have one, the law doesn't say that it actually has to be a good one. So kudos on Infinity for making this a good camera. So you have the backup view with your dynamic guides. So as I move my wheel, these red lines change showing where the trajectory of the vehicle will go as you move. It's very helpful if you're backing into a space or into a garage. And it's not only on this screen, it's also on this screen. So you have the backup view as well as the around view. And I think that this is really well done. And I will point out if you are in, so I'm gonna move it to drive, the camera goes away. That's a little bit annoying. I wish the camera would just stay on for a hot second when you move forward and put it into drive. But if you want the camera on, you come to this button right Right here you press it and the camera pops back on and now it's showing you the front view and it also has dynamic lines that show you where the vehicle is gonna go when you're moving in the forward direction also a bonus now if you want to change the camera views you just hit that button again and this right here changes and shows you the front, the back, the side, and gives you just another look at the vehicle. And I find this right side view here is especially helpful when you are parallel parking to make sure that you are close enough or, well, far enough away from the curb so you don't, you know, mess up your wheels. Now, the final thing I'm going to put on my good list is actually another thing that I agree with Tim on. You're going to have to wait for the bad list to see what we don't agree on. So stay tuned. But I really like this second row. And Tim's model had the captain's chairs and mine doesn't. It has the bench seats. But I still really like this because these seats are not uncomfortable. They're a little bit firm, but they have just enough squish and pattern that I think they could be comfortable for a long haul road trip. You also have the ability to recline a little bit so you can move that. And then this moves forward and backwards if you need to give yourself just a little extra leg room or you want to squish the person behind you. Um, so in addition to having a reasonably comfortable seat, you also have this right here. So this pops down. So instead of a center console, you do have this popping down with some um, cup holders and the armrest. Uh, you also have your air vents in the headliner up here with a LED light that can turn on and off if you're reading, you know, an actual book. You have HVAC controls back here that will do not only the temperature, but also the fan speed. And these outboard seats have heated seats. So there's a lot of stuff going on that will make this comfortable. In addition to the fact that, remember those USB-C and USB-A ports that I mentioned in the front? You got them back here too. There's one of each in addition to an actual plug. So you can be comfortable and charge your devices. So this rounds out the things that I have in my good column. All right, it is now time for the first thing in the bad column for the QX60. So here I am on the highway in Chicago and I'm going about 55 miles an hour. Um, I'm in the slow lane, uh, but I wanna go a little bit faster and I've decided that I wanna pass. So in order to do that, I have to accelerate, but here's what happens. I have my foot to the floor right now and the power just kicked in. So to me, especially in a place like Chicago where you have to drive aggressively or you will have a problem, um, this is a problem. I know Tim disagrees with me. He thought the engine power in the QX60 was amazing, but for me and the city driving that I do, it is not amazing. So in the suburbs, on city surface streets under 35 miles per hour, 
it is all good. It does exactly what you need it to do and it's fine. But as soon as you're trying to merge with traffic or do an aggressive passing maneuver, this is a non-starter for me. This, this, this is not enough. So this has a 3.5 liter V6 engine with 295 horsepower and again, trying to pass here. No, nope, 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 nope. This doesn't do it for me. This is a little bit too heavy and a little bit too sluggish um, and a little bit underpowered for my taste. So that's thing number one on the bad list. All right, I am moving to the third row of the Infinity QX to talk about thing number two and the bad column. And yeah, there is a whole lot of bad going on here. Uh, let, me, let me start with some of the good things first, and then we'll just get into why this third row is not going to work at all. So in the good space of this, you have two people back here, not three. So they put like a device holder right here. So this is meant to be a two person third row. And I like that because a lot of times they try and jam three people back here and that's not going to work. Again, size of a 10 year old here. And I feel like I'm pretty comfortable. I have enough leg room. I put these flat so that you could see me, but there's probably about an inch between my leg and the back of these seats. And plus the seats can slide forward a little bit to give me a little more room. So that's good. You've got cup holders, you've got a USB uh, A charge port on either side. You also have air vents up here. All of those things are good for a third row. But here's what's bad and is really, really, really bad. It's really bad. These, these right here. Why would you make a headrest like this? So I'm either kind of sitting like this so that I can have my neck in alignment and then my back isn't touching, or I'm sitting like this and then I feel frumpy because I'm just like, so I, these don't move and they need to be clicked back about two inches because otherwise I'm just going to, I mean, maybe they did this because the kids have their heads in their devices the entire time and they're just kind of, you know, giving some support for that. I don't know. I just think this is a, a recipe for bad posture in the future. And uh, yeah, I, while I recognize this is an occasional third row and you're probably not going to put somebody back here for a really long time or all of the time, this, this is just miserable design for for these for these headrests and i just yeah this this is very very bad i not comfortable at all not comfortable at all it's giving me a double chin not good now the third thing in the bad column is going to be the nissan-ness of the digital displays and it's not necessarily that these things look bad it's just that we've seen them on the Nissan vehicles and I just wanted to see something a little bit more special here. So from your display menu here, again, we've seen this on Nissan vehicles and then in your digital display here, like, yeah, this is a dead ringer for what we've seen in the Nissan Rogue. You do have the ability to change the meter view and give yourself a different view and that graphic animation is a little bit different as the gauges change, but this is exactly the same. This is exactly the same as what we've seen in the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, and I wanted something special. That little infinity badge there in the tachometer, that's not enough for me. I want more. Now this right here is probably going to be one of the biggest things that Tim and I don't agree on, and that is this flat display button area. So this is a flat surface. So there's nothing going on here. And as I just rush my fingers over it, as you can see, nothing is changing. It's not doing anything. And that's because you actually have to press it a little bit hard to make something happen. So it's like the whole screen moves when you press it. And now the good thing is that you get a little bit of haptic feedback. You can hear it. But you really have to give it a solid press and there's nothing here that says, like as I'm looking out you know, my, my front window, there's nothing that if I just reach my hand down here that says, oh, I'm gonna be turning on the heated steering wheel. Yeah, no, I, we're, I have to look to say, okay, I need to touch this spot on the screen right there to turn on my heated steering wheel. And it's the same thing for your uh, HVAC controls. So you can't just slide it, you have to 
give it a solid press in order for all of these things to change. And it took me a while to understand that. And at first I was like, I'm like, it's not doing anything. Why isn't it doing anything? And I was like, oh, I have to press that harder. So Tim thinks this looks really good and I don't disagree. I think it looks good, but you know, fingerprints. But um, I, I think it's a, an attractive setup, but it's not as easy to use as he says it is because if I've got my eyes looking that way, there is nothing that tells me what I'm touching here which a button does. A hard button, you know, you can memorize that and that's easy, but this, I don't know. I think this is more distracting while you're driving. But I will give Infinity credit, they do have a volume knob. So yeah, there, at least there's that. All right, it is now time for the final thing on the bad list and yeah, it's gonna be my driving position. And the reason why I saved this for last is because this is not going to be a huge problem for everybody. In fact, it's really only gonna be a problem for somebody who's on the petite side of the spectrum. In Tim's video, he had a really good driving position. He's an average man. <laughs> and I mean that in height. He's exceptional otherwise. Um, but he's an average sized dude. Um, so in terms of height, he is going to be able to be optimally positioned. But somebody on the petite side of the spectrum, when I'm not wearing heels, this is my driving position. So I can push my seat back a couple of inches with the platform heels I was wearing earlier, but tennis shoes, anything else? Yeah, I probably would like to be about two inches further away from the wheel. And this is just a little too close for comfort. I feel a little too close to, you know, an exploding airbag. Um, but the bigger problem is going to be this right here. My leg is kind of trapped in here. And so like hitting the underbelly of the column, hitting like the underbelly of the dash here, um, moving from brake to gas, like I'm just knocking my knee all over the place. And, and so this is just a less than ideal position for somebody on the petite side of the spectrum. So this is a warning for anybody who's in the under five foot to about five two column. You really need to sit in this driver's seat and spend some time here and adjust the seat and move your leg around to see how it fits. I would even get in and out of the vehicle because I'm gonna tell you like getting out of the vehicle, like I trap my, my hips between the steering wheel and the side bolstering. So just not a comfortable experience. So I just, if you're, if you're short, spend some time with this vehicle and really see how you feel about the driving position. If it's only an occasional vehicle for you, your husband's buying it, you're only gonna drive it once or twice, doesn't really matter. But if this is your vehicle, spend some serious time with it because this is, this is not good for somebody who's petite. Okay, if you have not seen Tim's video on the Infiniti QX60, you should definitely go do that. We will link to it above because by the way, we have very different perspectives about this vehicle. While he thought it was amazing and one of the best Infiniti SUVs he's ever driven, I think it's fine. It's not great, it's not awful. It has some good things, it has some bad things. Wasn't overwhelmed, you know, by it. Wasn't underwhelmed by it, it's just fine. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up this five good things, five bad things review on the Infiniti QX60. And I hope you will check us out on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Twitter at Pickup Truck Talk. And don't forget, we do a live stream every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time where we pick some topics that we want to talk about and we let you pick some topics real time that we will answer your question. So if you haven't caught us on a live stream, be sure to do that. And uh, until then, until next time, I will see you down the road. <laughs>